Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is Google Apps updates roundup number 80 and in this episode I'm going to show you more than 33 new features in 20 different Google Apps so without further ado let's jump in. Let's start with Google Photos as it got tons of new changes. When you take a look at the home page you will see that there is a new plus button at the top right corner. Tapping on it will give you quick shortcuts to create an album, collage, highlight video which is something I'm going to talk about later, cinematic photo and animation. On top of this, the sharing tab has been removed from the bottom and now we have a button at the top right corner that takes you to the same page. Also, the Google Photos logo is now shifted towards the left instead of being centered like before. Now let's talk about the new memory step. This is one of the biggest features pushed to Google Photos in a while. It doesn't only look great, but there are a lot more things you can do now. First, we got a much bigger cover photo with the squiggly lines at the top and the bottom. Some of the snapshots inside the memory will appear in material U shapes that we got used to. And when you scroll down just a little bit, you will see a couple of new buttons floating at the top. The first one will allow you to play this memory. And the second one will allow you to create a new memory by tapping create new and choose whatever photos you have in your gallery or you can also tap on it and use any of these suggestions to automatically create a memory and add it to your timeline. Under each one, you will find a couple of new buttons. The first one is share, which will allow you to create a link and copy it to your clipboard, share it through your apps, or send it to one of your Google Photos contacts. The ellipsis button will give you some quick shortcuts. The first one is the ability to edit the title directly from this page. You can also change the layout, and there are two different shapes. This is the first one, and here's the uh, original one. You can also change the album cover by choosing any of the other photos inside your memory. And finally, you can delete it from your timeline by tapping on remove. But there are even more. So let's go inside the memory and then tap the ellipses. The first option is called select, which will allow you to select multiple photos, share them directly from here. You can add them to album, share the album highlight video and so on. Tapping the ellipses again, you have the ability to edit the date and time, and here you will get a couple of options. Also, you can edit the location, but this is not possible for the photos taken with the camera. Also, you have the ability to remove from album or move to trash. So let's cancel the selection and see what else we have. The second option under the ellipses is called edit and here you will get multiple things to do, like the ability to add more photos to your memory. You can add extra text, like for example family gathering but when i tried this feature it doesn't work it says here couldn't add text to the album so i'm not sure what it does exactly back to the edit page and you can also add extra locations to the memory by selecting from the map you can type the location name or use the uh, suggested locations so let's try this one so it's adding locations based on the photos in your memory and this is one of the suggested locations you can also sort the photos by the oldest, newest, or recently added. You can edit the title. You can remove the memory. It will also show you how many photos inclu included in this memory. And when you tap on this edit floating button, you will get here the ability to turn off the auto select photos and select the photos manually yourself. And I think that's pretty much it. From here, you can also change the album cover. You have options which will allow you to add more people and pits to your memory with the ability to keep the existing photos by checking this box. You can also turn off the link sharing in case you shared the memory via link with others and you no longer want them to view your photos. You can turn off the feature from here. Then you have the ability to delete the entire memory by tapping on this button and you have quick shortcuts for sharing and adding more photos. But if you want to edit the memory before sharing, but keep it as it is on your phone, you need to play the memory first and then tap on share. And here you have share highlights. And this one will allow you to edit the memory by removing or adding photos. You can change the title, then tap on done and share it without impacting your memory. The last thing I'm going to show you under this tab is the suggestions you might see while scrolling through your memories. So for example, it grouped those five items and giving me here a plus button tapping on it will allow me to create a memory right away from these items give it a title and i'm done it will be added to my timeline like in this case over here now let's talk about the new changes under the search tab when you navigate to the documents section you will see some new categories 
The first one is called the screenshots, which will include any documents that you saved as a screenshot, which is different from the normal screenshots album. Then we have books and magazines. We have event information. I found also another one called social, which will include any links or screenshots from social media apps. And you'll notice here that we got a new tag at the top left says automatic album to let you know that this one is automatically created. I also got a survey about this new feature. Let me show you the screenshot over here. It says here, overall, how satisfied are you with the new categorization of photos under documents in Google Photos? And you can choose your answer from here. And the last change I'm going to show you in this chapter is a new feature added to the highlight video. I already showed you the new interface, but Google added one extra feature, which is the ability to create a highlight video using AI. It will show you here some suggestions like some people, uh, some places, and dates. So for example, if I'm going to tap on my son and then choose 2023, tap on preview, it will automatically create a highlight video without me selecting the photos or videos, giving me the same new interface I showed you in the previous episode. And if you didn't find what you need in the suggestions, you can add the people and pits manually by tapping on this button. Tap on the calendar button to choose a date range, or you can simply select the photos and videos manually by tapping on this one. But Google completely removed the predefined themes from this feature, which is something I talked about in my previous episode that you can see right now on the screen. The next app is YouTube. And when you open any channel page and then go to Shorts, now they appear as a grid instead of showing as a list like before. The second change is the suggested search queries. So for example, here I'm searching for Google Maps and when I keep scrolling, I will find another section here called people also search for. So let me show you how it looks. It says here people also search for Gmail, Booking.com, Google News, and Instagram, Apple Maps, and so on. Moving to YouTube Music, Google pushed the 2023 music recap that you can find right away on your homepage in this banner, or you can also access it by tapping on your profile picture, and you can find it over here. So let's tap on it and see what we've got. At the top, there is a big button called Get Your Recap and some other options in a carousel. Tapping on it will simply play a story that includes all the information related to your music behavior, how many artists, how many songs, how many minutes you listen to, what's your top tracks, and so on and so forth. And it looks much better than before in terms of graphics and how it animates. And when you start playing the story, you can hear some background music playing that you can mute using this button at the top. And you can also download or share any of the photos you see in this uh, story. After that, the carousel is exactly the same thing, but it will take you to a specific part in the story instead of going through the whole thing. So for example, if I want to check the top artists, I can tap on this one or the top tracks. This is what I can do. When you scroll down a bit, you will see something called the musical photo album automatically generated, which you can also download or share with others. When you scroll down more, you will see some playlists about your recap. You have the full 2023 recap playlist, the full recap or the summer and some other suggested playlists from YouTube Music. Now let's talk about Google Messages. And the first change is the ability to pin up to 10 conversations instead of only five like before. And when you do the action, you will notice here at the bottom, it says pinned four out of 10 and instead of five like before. The second change is under the spam and blocked messages. And when you go there and open any of the conversations, you will see this banner at the top to let you know why this type of messages is being blocked automatically by Google Messages. It says here, similar messages you received were identified as spam. Google keeps your personal information private, safe, and secure. And lastly, Google changed the branding of the app from Messages by Google to Google Messages. Now let's talk about Google Maps, specifically the new color palette. I created a separate video talking about this new change that you can find its link in the description below. But let's talk quickly about this new change in this episode as well. You will see a screenshot from the old design on the screen for the side-by-side -side comparison. The water is now using a teal color. For the green areas, we are getting this new mint color. And when it comes to the highways, they are now using a light blue and a set of yellow. And also for the streets and roads, they are now in gray color on a light background and a sort of the other way around like before. 
From the comments I received on my previous video, most of you didn't like the new color palette while others think it's a fresh new look that we needed for a long time. In my case, I have mixed feelings. I do like how it looks, but at the same time, I don't think it represents the real life colors as accurate as before. When it comes to the dark theme, it looks pretty much the same as before. There is no big difference between the two. But keep in mind, if you have Android Auto, you will see the same exact color palette in your car. I tried the new color palette on Android Auto and I didn't have a problem seeing things while driving, but I know if you are colorblind, you might find it a bit harder now after this new change. And that's why I hope Google will add some sort of an accessibility feature to modify the colors in a way to make it easier for them. Moving to the contacts app and now the birthday notifications under the highlights tab are getting new backgrounds to give you the birthday vibes. And here you have slightly different buttons too. You can quickly add a notification for this birthday one day before the birthday, two days, seven days and so on. You have multiple choices here. So I'm gonna give it like two days and on the same day as well, then tap on save. And now I got a notification for my friend's birthday. Next, Google Meet. And the first change is a new feature called on the go that will make it easier for you to take meetings if you're moving with your phone. And you can find this feature by tapping on the ellipses while in the meeting, and then you'll find on the go. What it does, it will simply turn off the camera, keep only the audio, and it will give you much bigger buttons to make it easier for you uh, to do some actions while driving or while walking and you can exit the mode by tapping on the X at the top left corner and you can return your camera back on to continue the meeting normally. There is also a new toggle under the app settings and then meeting settings that will automatically suggest the on the go mode if it detected your phone moving. The second change is only available on the web for now which is the ability to generate backgrounds for your meeting using AI. To do this, you can click on the ellipses button while in the meeting, click on apply visual effects, and you will find a banner called generate a background. Here you will get a text box to describe what kind of background you want with the ability to choose between different styles. In this example, I typed luxurious office and I chose the sci-fi style. So let's take a look at the results. Keep in mind that it can take up to 20 seconds to generate the results and here are the ones I got. I think all of them look great and the best part is you can generate as many as you want. And once you pick a background for your meeting, it will be automatically added to your backgrounds collection so you can reuse it later. And when you hover your mouse over the AI generated backgrounds, you will see a floating delete button to remove any of them if you want. Next, the Gmail app for tablets. I don't have a tablet to show you this, but here's an article from 9to5Google talking about this new change. You'll notice here that the old version used to have the navigation rail at the bottom of the screen, but now Google decided to push it to the side. And I think that looks better and also more usable in case if you have a foldable or a tablet that will make it easier for you to reach that navigation rail. Not only this, it might make your uh, inbox list a little bit narrower than before, but you already have enough space to read the messages normally, so it's not a big problem. Now let's talk about Google Chrome. And the first change is under settings and then password manager. When you tap on your profile picture, you will get this redesigned account switcher card at the bottom of the screen with an expand arrow. Tapping on it will show you all the accounts you have on the device, in addition to a new option here called passwords on this device. Tapping on it will simply show you the passwords locally saved on this device and not synchronized to your Google account. And you will see a cloud icon here at the top right corner with a cross to let you know that these passwords can only be accessed from this device. And you can tap on it again to switch to your normal Google account. The second change is the revamped Chrome Web Store on desktop that you can access from the ellipses menu, then extensions, then visit Chrome Web Store. And you'll notice here that it got a complete redesign. It matches in the material you design language. You will see more rounded corners everywhere, more colors, and it looks pretty much the same as Google Play Store. Next, Google Drive. And the only change we have is the updated document scanner. At the bottom right corner, now we have two floating buttons. The one at the top will take you right away to the document scanner. Tapping on it will show you here at the bottom two options, either to do a manual scanning or auto capture. And as you see here, it picked up the document on the table automatically in a second and giving me the option to save it. 
but if you want to do this yourself you can choose manual and you will still get some guidance on how to do the scanning so i'm going to keep it on auto capture and now it scanned the document for me as you see at the bottom i have the ability to add multiple pages by tapping on the plus button so over here i'm gonna rotate the document and it will do the scanning automatically one more time you can scroll through the pages that way and you can add as many pages as you want at the bottom right corner we have the crop and rotate option you can do automatic crop no crop or rotate the image then tap on apply next we have the filters you have an auto filter a color filter and gray scale and you can apply to all pages if you have multiple in your scanning then tap on apply then we have the done button at the top right corner that will ask you about the name of the document and where you want to save it next the google app and now when you go to the saved page you will see three tabs at the top one is called saved which includes all the collections you have the second one is for the liked items only and the third is called followed and from here you can change your interests by unfollowing a certain website or follow it back again or you can only turn off the notifications for a specific website or topic now let me show you some minor tweaks across different apps the first one is the new icon for the find my device app the google tv app got a new widget called the highlights which will show you the recent suggestions from here you can also access the google tv remote it will give you a card at the bottom to quickly connect and also you can jump right away to the search and when you play an audio inside the files app you will get a redesigned media player with the ability to adjust the playback speed by tapping on the ellipses and it will give you this slider with some quick shortcuts when you search for images in google search and open any of them now you will see a redesigned page it has a much bigger share and save buttons with a visit button that has a pill shaped design too now let me show you a set of new features only exclusive to pixel devices the first one is under the wallpaper and the style app then more wallpapers under ai wallpapers you will see some new categories that i've never seen before and they also got some new backgrounds for example the night theme got a different background and so on and when you go inside and tap on any of the words you will get a different picker now you can scroll vertically instead of scrolling horizontally like before and that gives you more space to choose whatever you want google also added 12 new wallpapers under the community lens category that you can see right here if you have pixel buds pro now you have the ability to use the quick phrases feature that you can find under google assistant settings and then quick phrases it says here that now you can use the word answer decline or silence when you get a phone call while wearing your headphones instead of tapping on the buds with your hands google also expanded the support for the car crash detection feature under the safety and emergency app to include more countries and now you can use it in austria belgium india portugal and switzerland and lastly the phone call notification got a slightly different design now the hang up button is much smaller than the other two so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new changes i wanted to show you please reach me out on social media if you spotted any new feature in google apps to include in my future episodes but for now thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video